So that we know the reach has dropped on Instagram, and I'm going to be completely honest with you, okay? There is no magic bullet. There's no one thing that you can do that will turn your Instagram account into exactly what it was in 2018, 2017, when you could post images and they would reach people. But what we are going to talk about is the things that you can do to improve your experience on Instagram, make it so that you're having a better time, you're reaching new people, and you are still gaining followers through this kind of difficult time. So the first thing that we're going to do, if what you're doing isn't working, you're gonna change what you're doing, okay? You're gonna gain perspective. You're gonna see what else would work and what wouldn't work, okay? This is a time to adapt. So when you change your content, you could change it to try and you know gain more engagement. You could do it to try and reach new people. For me personally, and this might work for you too, I have changed my content so that I enjoy Instagram more. If I enjoy Instagram more, I'm likely to spend more time on the platform, I'm likely to engage with people more and do all the things that Instagram probably wants to see from me and my account. So I'm a photographer and I post photos to Instagram quite stubbornly these days. So what I decided to do was I changed my edit process where I don't spend so much time editing my photos, I'm just going to slap one of my presets on and export way more photos. This means that I'm posting more carousels, I'm spending more time on the platform and doing all of the things that Instagram wants to see. So what I did was I changed my content to adapt to the situation. So go back through your feed. If you're posting the same kind of stuff, just think about what, what could you do differently? How could you post differently in this time to just gain some perspective? Maybe you'll see that it's good. Maybe you'll see that it's bad, but at least you will learn something. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna change our hashtags, the subject of our hashtags. We still want it to be appropriate to the post, but we're gonna look at some of the other things that we can do, hashtags that we've never used before to gain that perspective. Again, why do the same thing if it's not working? That's This is the, the key to this video, okay? So what I did was I post a lot of uh, cabins because I'm an interiors photographer. I, I photograph cabins and luxury accommodation, things like that. I often post to things like cabin vibes, cabin style, cabin life, those sorts of things. And recently I just decided to post to log cabins and log cabin photos, that sort of stuff. And I was really surprised that I actually reached new people and I gained new followers, which was surprising because that doesn't normally happen with my current hashtags. So what I'm suggesting to you is, is there hashtags that you can use that are still very appropriate to your posts, but you've never used them before? Okay, try those. That's what we're gonna do. We wanna gain perspective and we wanna learn something by using brand new hashtags that we've never used. And in the same vein, we're going to change the subject of our hashtags, but next we're going to change the size of our hashtags. If you don't know what I mean by the size of the hashtag for anyone who's new to Instagram, what I'm saying is, is that the amount of posts within that hashtag. So for example, I'm a landscape photographer. If I post a landscape photography, there are millions of posts within landscape photography. So I'm competing against, you know, every account on the planet posting to that hashtag. If I changed it to landscape photos, that's a much smaller hashtag. There are less posts in it, there is less competition, and it's more likely that someone following that hashtag is gonna get my post popping up on their feed. Now that principle has been around for a long time, that principle of competition within hashtags, and what I did was I just dialed that number back to much, much smaller hashtags than I was usually using, and I got good results. I reached people in the hashtags and I gained followers from those hashtags. It didn't happen every time, but it gave me much more chance of reaching new people. So my suggestion to you is look at the the hashtags that you're using, if you're using brand new ones, this is a good time to pick new ones that are quite small. At the very least, what will end up happening is you'll choose hashtags that are so small that not many people post to them, but your post may end up at the very top and it may stay there for weeks and weeks. You know, people might jump in, people might see your post and they might check out your content and hit the follow button. You never know, it's worth trying. So those first three are things that we can do to improve our experience on Instagram. So we want to spend more time on the platform. Then we'll be doing all the things that Instagram wants to see to, to share our content with new people. And while we're doing that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take power away from Instagram by spreading ourselves onto other platforms. So I wouldn't recommend spreading yourself really thinly across every platform, but I would, if you're not already, I would pick one other platform, something that you can do alongside all the things that we said at the beginning of this video. You see this drop in Instagram reach kind of doesn't affect me so much because I already connect with people on Twitter, I connect with people here on YouTube, I connect with people on my website. So I have lots of different places that I can kind of share my world and if you are putting everything into Instagram then you can see the problem that you've got so use this time 
to maybe build something somewhere else to take that power away that Instagram has. Now I have videos on how to build something on Twitter, how all the different platforms that photographers and artists could be using. I'll leave those in the description for you to watch after this video. And for the next one, we're gonna jump back to Instagram. So if we think of what the goal is on Instagram, really the goal is to connect with people. Okay, we don't wanna just post stuff people to tap buttons and their numbers go up and then yeah, happy days. That's not really the experience we're looking for. We're human beings. We want to connect with people. We want to share what we're doing and have that resonate with people and for that to bounce back so we understand the effect of our efforts within the kind of photographic, artistic, creative world. But if you want to reach people, if you want to connect with people, there's no reason why you can't just do that yourself. If you want to guarantee connection. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into the hashtags, the ones that we're using, the ones that are appropriate to the posts that we post, our community, our niche, and we're gonna just scroll down. We're gonna take a look at what people are doing. For example, I would look at hashtag landscape photography. When I see something that resonates with me, that I feel good about, I will jump into that post, maybe like it. I will leave a comment telling the person what I think of it and build a little bit of a connection. If I really like that person's content, I will hit the follow button. You see, if we don't do this, then Instagram becomes this one-way platform where we're all just posting content, expecting there to be some kind of reaction when we're not actually reacting ourselves. And as I've already said in other videos, if you feel like jumping into the hashtags, communicating with people and commenting on other people's posts sounds a lot like hard work, just remember that that's what you're expecting other people to do for you. Now this next one makes me feel a bit funny to talk about because it's a little bit kind of on the nose and it's a little bit frustrating, particularly for us photographers, artists. If you haven't already tried posting reels, post reels. If you think of the goal of Instagram, okay, what are we trying to do? We're trying to reach new people, we're trying to reach more people and connect with the people who have already hit that follow button. One way to definitely do that is to post reels. I post reels, I don't take it too seriously. I often just, you know, I'll record something I'm doing on Photoshop or something I'm doing in the studio. I tend not to take it too seriously. I don't have like a content strategy on reels or anything like that. I just have fun with it, but I don't post very often. However, when I do post, it reaches way more people than if I post photographs. So if you're someone who posts to Instagram and you want to reach new people, one, one way of kind of guaranteeing that is to jump on and start posting reels. You've probably noticed way more video in your feed. Again, probably a big part of why the reach has dropped on our photos and still images and things. Try it if you haven't already tried it. If you feel frustrated by it, just try and put that to one side, find a way of enjoying it because you will reach new people if you haven't already tried reels. Now the next point I'm gonna raise is something we've already slightly talked about, but I'm gonna talk about it from a more mechanical point of view. So you have an online presence. If you have an Instagram account, maybe you have a website, maybe you have a Twitter account, a YouTube. While we're kind of riding out this change with Instagram, and I think things will settle down at some point and we'll all understand again, why things have changed and what we need to do to move forward on a platform like Instagram. And while all these changes are happening on Instagram, what we're gonna do is we're gonna optimize and improve the rest of our online presence. So for example, if you're a photographer and you don't already have a website, you could spend a bit of time making a website. If you do have a website and like a blog or something and you often link out from your Instagram, you could start working on the mechanics of your links. So you could start tracking the links from your profile so you can start getting a really good idea of how many people are actually coming through from your link. So let's say you link products, you'd be able to track that yourself so you don't have to rely on the analytics of the place that you're linking people to. Maybe you have a service or a product that you offer in real life, but you haven't actually put that on your website yet, or you haven't started talking about it on Instagram. It's time to start connecting all these things up. So my suggestion is look at the mechanics of your whole online presence and see if you can improve that and optimize it because that would be a really good use of your time while we're trying to ride out this sort of period on Instagram where it all feels very strange and we're not really reaching anybody. And the next point, and this is a very important one, I haven't really spoken about this recently, is just enjoy what you have. It seems very rich for me to post a video all about this optimizing reach and all this sort of stuff and just suddenly say, oh, just enjoy it, you know. But that is a very, very important thing. Social media is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be a positive experience. It's supposed to be a really good use of your time. And if you're not enjoying it, you've got two options. One is to find a way of enjoying it or stop doing it. And I would highly recommend finding a way of enjoying it because connecting with people across social media is actually a really enriching thing to do with your time because you suddenly get this big world perspective and you meet new people and you get to know new people quite well, people that you've never met. And that's a really, really wonderful thing. And I feel grateful to be alive 
at a time when we can do that. You know, you may be gutted that you're only getting 20% of your following actually seeing your content, but that's still people. Those are still people sat somewhere in the world or stood on a device looking at something that you've created. And we need to find ways of being grateful for that because social media is only going one way. I've got a video coming soon about that one way that it's going. And, you know, we need to be grateful for the things that are happening rather than focusing on the things that aren't happening. And this leads us on to the next point, which is still about having a positive experience and a positive mindset on the platform, but we're doing this through realism and kind of accountability, I suppose. What we need to do is be honest with yourself and look at what it is that you're doing, maybe out of uh, a lack of experience, or maybe it's just out of stubbornness that is hindering your experience on this platform. It doesn't mean you have to change, but you do have to accept it. I'll give myself as an example, okay? If I look at my account, I don't post very regularly, sometimes weekly. Now, I absolutely know that that is not the best way to use Instagram. As I've already said, I don't post many reels. Now, we know 100% that Instagram want people posting reels. They want to be a competitor to TikTok, so they want all their creators posting their best content on reels. Now, I don't do that, so I need to accept that by not doing that, I'm not adapting to the platform, and therefore I have to be at least accepting of the results of me not doing what Instagram wants me to do. Now, I'm not saying you have to change, I'm just saying accept where you aren't changing and don't expect perfect results if you are not willing to do the things that Instagram wants you to do. As frustrating as that may be, that kind of thought process actually leads to a much more positive mindset and just says, hey, I didn't do that, so I'm not going to expect, you know, get a reward for it, so all good. And next I'm going to share something that I'm actually really excited about. As I've already said in this video and some of my long-term subscribers will already know that I've, you know, I spend a lot of my time photographing cabins, tree houses and kind of interesting adventurous accommodation. I've always wanted to share that experience, but it's never felt right for this channel. So I've started a new YouTube channel where I share that experience. I kind of take you to these places and I want to share some of the coolest places to go on holiday, some of the places that people don't often think of going. If you decide to take a look and you hit that subscribe button and never watch one of the videos, that's bad for me. So don't feel like I'm asking you to hit that subscribe button. What I would love for you to do is to go and watch the video that I posted all the way through and if you enjoyed it, if you want to see more of these kind of adventurous spaces, then hit the subscribe button if you have the intention of watching more of those videos. <laughs> Sorry if that sounded a little bit stern, uh, but it's very important to me that the people who have subscribed enjoy the content. So with that in mind, take a look at this video uh, up on the screen. I hope you enjoy this. Uh, funnily enough, I'm probably wearing the exact same clothes as I am now in that video. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and I will see you in the next one.